Hello, in this one I want to talk about Season Rebirth patch notes that came a few hours ago. And this is probably the first season that there is no need for Copium and Hopium. Because this is one of the best season we, ha we had so far. And that's because of the balance changes that this new director did. So in this one, I'm gonna talk about the patch notes first, then unique items, and then skill and link rune balance changes. We are getting new mode rebirth. In that mode, they are specifying that the legendary gear is not dropped, but that's only because it comes from the origin mode, where you could drop it, but in this mode, we're gonna be able to enchant it instead. And we are getting no normal mode and hardcore modes, only rebirth mode. That means bigger player base in the same mode. They are adding some exclusive tutorial quests to the rebirth mode, nothing too serious. After that they are changing the drop rules, so basically in rebirth mode we have high chance to drop high tier options. That helps a lot the new players, they have less reason to craft or use Vespa essences at the same time. We are getting mode buffs, which is a huge increase from what we have in hardcore mode and in normal modes. So more rune XP, relic XP, chant XP on kill, that means higher level when finishing the campaign. Chaos points discount, so easier to do chaos statue because events are cheaper. And gear drop chance, this one comes from the origin mode. For content, in the chaos dungeon we are getting tier 12 reborn serpents. I think that means that we're not gonna have to fight a stronger version of Serpents to drop lower tier Chaos Orbs, which is tier 8 and tier 9. So they're gonna separate it, there's gonna be one tier 12 and another one is gonna be the Greater Cards that we always had. For Exodium Dungeons, basically on hard difficulty, we're only gonna be able to do tier 12 Exodium maps. That's because people in Season 5 were doing tier 3s, tier 6s and tier 9s on hard. And those maps were dropping a lot of good stuff when they're not supposed to. New Descent Tenero, not much to say about it. We don't know how strong it's gonna be, but they said it's gonna be stronger than the other ones. Void Rift in Rebirth mode is gonna be every single week instead of two weeks like it was in Season 5. And they're saying that the new unique gear is only gonna be dropped in the rebirth mode and the old season 5 gear is gonna now be dropped in standard mode. Black market changes, nothing too serious, like always, it's gonna be reset. Energy effects, they are rebalancing it, as they said before. So energy effect is gonna be, effect multiplier is gonna affect the buffs and debuffs of the energy effect. And they're introducing the new option that's called energy debuff effect reduction. It's basically to minimize the negative effects of the energies, which is a big deal. Maybe energy season is coming back. For the monsters, they are adjusting the drops of the champions, so we have higher chance to drop transcendent items on the season rebirth. They are making Chaos Dungeon bosses stronger right now, but we don't know what it means. Stats, is it gonna have more HP, is it gonna have more damage, we will have to see. The bottom left abyss monsters, that's basically monsters at 145 level. Um, I'm calling those cursed monsters because they have big auras. These gonna be dropping Apollyon bones right now. That means you don't have to do the Yunos vein. You have a low chance to obtain the Apollyon entrances just from the NPCs on the map without any events. Puro, they just making it having no HP. It's based on number of strikes, so people wouldn't be discouraged to kill these guys at the same time. Those Purus gonna open a vault, and in those vaults, the rewards gonna be drastically increased when you are doing maps. But they are specifying that the unique card that's called Grave Robber King's Underground Vault is gonna be excluded from the changes. So it's not gonna be more rewards from that. For Purify Ancient Being event, so basically it's now gonna be event when it was Season 5 Chaos Statue mechanic basically. Right now we will have to pay Chaos Points for that, but at the same time, they're gonna adjust the Exodium card drop rates. So it should be still easier to get. For the Alchemy, we're now gonna be able to synthesize low-tier Exodium cards into high-tier Exodium cards. 
This one is a big. We no longer drop our king gear. But there is still a big question. Are they removing TF5 as a wall or just removing the implicit mods that were too broken? At the same time, we are getting the tier 10 chaos orbs. For essences, they are adjusting ancient and divine essence drop rates. For chaos cards, they just mentioning that there is that new terror of the darkness, so the new serpents card and that new serpents card. It's gonna require a new key called Otherworld Key, Might. Runestones, nothing too serious. Damage Jump is still better. And they are removing their Return Scroll, so we're gonna save a little bit more space in our inventory. Improvements to the Zodiacs, so they are adding energy debuff effects to a Zodiac in tier 9 node, which is really nice because this node was kinda useless, and they are Renewing the minion specialization. Have no idea what this is gonna be, but minions were kinda dead, not dead, not many players like that. System, so Zodiac Walker, I'm gonna mention this, even though I'm not into pay to win stuff, but this is gonna save you so much time just because the Sprinter one, the better version one of Zodiac Walker, is getting out of this assemble and bag expansion. And I think this is hella pay to win. I don't care that much about Gacha, but this one makes me angry. Probably this is the, gonna be the first time I spend any money on this game, any real money on this game. Withdraw all by grade in the storage. It's really simple stuff. So if you didn't fix your stashes yet, you can do that in season six. It's gonna be so much easier. For the guidebook, nothing much to say. It's really good for the new players. Inventory filter, they are not giving us any more information. Because we don't know how many options we're going to be able to apply to a filter. And if it's limited, it's not going to be fun. If it's not limited, and then it's going to be a really easy game. And it's not going to be pain in the ass to actually fix all the stuff. For settings, we're getting minimize effects. I don't know what it's going to mean. As we have something similar right now, I think. For the quest, basically they are doing some convenience changes. Changing the skill and link runes grind in Lupin Clearing Acts, which is a big thing because some of those were really outdated. For uniques, we are getting a lot of good uniques and we are getting campaign uniques, which we never had. So those campaign uniques are gonna help us with the progression on the storyline run. And it's supposed to be much faster right now. I'm not gonna get into that. They are all similar in what they do, but at the same time, they are all good. So, first of all, let's go to the big one, which is Acubens Punishment. That is a scepter that has 70% damage jump against enemies affected by lightning status. So, this scepter is not, good, is not just good as a main weapon, it's also really good in the Lacrima. Chain Lightning with 5,000% 5, 5, lightning damage multiplier, I really don't know how strong it's gonna be. I have not seen similar interaction in the game, so we're gonna have to test this. Another one is the Light and Darkness, which is a staff, and this one is for Flame Trower. Flame Trower, I don't know how to pronounce that. But Flame Trower didn't get any buffs, I really don't know how strong this item is gonna be. They keep trying to give us more damage jump and attack cycles when channeling, they're trying to kinda improve the channeling stuff, but I don't think if it's working. And Transcended version is just stronger, but still I don't think if it's gonna be enough. Another one is Mirror Wall, it's a low tier shield that has a specific interaction with a skill called Enduring Pain. Can't really tell much, doesn't look too strong. Boreal's Heart is a shield, and this is a barrier shield. And from now on, most of these uniques are really strong for the barrier builds. They are really trying to make spells more viable. That's another reason why this season is gonna be so good. They are really trying to balance all the skills and this is one way to do it. Just making barrier builds stronger as more people might play spells. I'm not gonna get into it, every single unique this season is really strong. It's situational but really strong. 
Another one is Pick of Wisdom. Again, barrier stuff. Really, really strong. Has so much barrier on the helmet, it's crazy. Cold Comfort is a frost bomb unique that makes fire projectiles periodically in a circle. No idea what it means, but it has cold damage amplification. That means it's strong and it is and it shoulders. It can be really good for Delacrima when you are doing frost bomb build. Twilight Whale. Twilight Whale is an equivalent to a chest that we got in prior seasons that has armor multiplier on it and you become invincible because this makes you somewhat inv invincible but just for barrier build. Vespa Destruction is a unique for the Deadly Poison Claw. This, is, this unique is equivalent to a Shadow Link by the way. Because it gives additional hit when you are using dual wield. And either way, using dual wield on Deadly Poison Claw is not a bad idea. And it gives you extra damage amplification. I don't really know how strong it's gonna be, because there is still a question. Is that additional hit also affects the, your shadow? If it does, Deadly Poison Claw is gonna be really strong, but it needs testing. Another one is the Leg Bone of the Wind, it's shoes for the Ice Crystal Arrow. And these shoots are insanely strong. I'm gonna go straight into the Transcendent version, but it gives you cold damage amplification. That's why I think Ice Crystal Arrow is gonna be hella strong. There is Level Footsteps, another boots that give you maximization chance up to 15%. Another boots that are probably best in slot. Vespa Blessing is a new belt that everybody is gonna thirst for as it has enhanced potion effect, a lot of H flat HP and HP amplification. At the same time, we are getting a set blessing, but I don't know if, if it's only one or it's actually full set bonus. That's a big question and another option is a flat damage. That means this belt has everything and it's gonna be hella expensive, GG's. And the last one is Blacksmith Ring. Blacksmith Ring is again barrier stuff, it makes Siphon Life skill to be applied as a barrier instead of HP Absorb. Strong stuff, especially for something like Lacrima. For the skill balance, I'm gonna do it simple. I'm just gonna show you my notepad, and I made a tier list, but this tier list is made before testing. And it's not that much about damage, it's more about the progression in a seasonal mode. But it's only my opinion. So, what happened? Basically, Frostthorn and Frostbomb got buffed by a lot. It's just a bigger tooltip. And this combination with a new unique item is gonna be really strong. With the barrier changes as a spell type build, I think it's gonna own. Ice Crystal Arrow, if you saw my prediction video, I thought it's... I didn't know what is, what's gonna happen. And what happened, it got increased in a tooltip damage, like insanely, and it's gonna be so strong right now, as Ice Crystal Arrow can be, depending on the Awakening, multi-target skill, or a little bit stronger single-target skill. So Ice Crystal Arrow is just... Default choice if you don't know what you're gonna play. Black Plague and Hama, those two skills have decent tooltips and they're gonna be strong. I only put them into STR Plus, they still need testing. But they new and they are interesting, I'm gonna play these. STR, I'm keeping Unleashed Lightning Shot, got a tooltip damage increase. Ogre Arrow for no reason got a tooltip damage increase. It's single target damage is really strong. I don't know why they did that. Rapid Shot got a little bit of a rework in the sense that it's doing more damage right now. They changed the tooltip, increased the tooltip damage and made it damage dampening on every hit a little bit less. Also strong. Explosive Slash got reworked. Right now it doesn't scale with area of effect. However, it scales with weapon range and it's a big buff, by the way. It's not a nerf, it's a buff. Just because how the skill works. Earth Blow is gonna be insanely strong. It has extra maintained position stacks and a bigger tooltip. 
so it's gonna scale so much better and in season five it was not bad it was just really hard to build right now it's gonna be probably a little bit easier combo on the tooltip has maximization chance which is a crazy buff even five percent means a lot plus it got a little bit more tooltip damage also don't remember if it was flat or a multiplier deadly poison claw as i mentioned in the unique stuff it doesn't didn't get any buffs but the unique is really good ATA plus, I left cross slash, it got AOE nerf, but it got a little bit of damage increase, it's gonna be strong. Frost strike, vervin slash, and poisoning of arrows, they are going down. They were nerfed, they were not nerfed too hard, however, this nerf lets all the skills to shine, especially the ones that were buffed this season. But they're still viable, but not as easy to scale anymore, not as, not as easy progression. Fire bomb shot, I only keep it in here because it's only one bow gun build, but fire bomb shot is strong. It got a nice tooltip increase, it, it's gonna be good. Electric ball is an interesting one. People saying that there is a really interesting interaction with it, I don't know about that interaction, but basically, if you stack projectile speed dampening, so you decrease the speed of the projectile, you can actually proc electric ball once than more time more than one time on the same target i'm a little bit tired but yeah basically the slower you go the more hits you're gonna get and this is where my tier list actually ends i added a trigger list as trigger in here just means a secondary skill that is triggered to be cast at the same time I forgot to mention that early, but yeah, this is what I think. At least from of the buffs that we got right now, this is the trigger list. Judgment of Night and Dark Judgment, they got buffed. But I don't really know the interaction in game, but I think these are really strong triggers right now. Electric Ball and Frost Bomb is just by default. They are strong on their own, so triggering with them, any of the skill is going to be really strong. And Blades of Death... Blades of Death is not as strong as I thought it's gonna be. It got a little bit of buff, but it's a little bit stronger, but not as strong as alterna uh, alternatives, basically. And they put a lot of skills into the question mark just because, I don't know, they got buffs, but they are not anything too crazy. The buffs is just not enough. Lightning Arrow in general only got the changes for the energy effects, so it wouldn't be as bad with the energies. Before finishing this, I really want to go back to ask a few questions. And these questions are for the patch notes. Because they did not answer if we are getting tier 10 charms, if we are getting any other tier 35 gear as arcane gear is removed they did not explain anything else about the uh, offering system we don't know if we're gonna drop serpent's essence as hardcore mode does not exist they didn't talk about campaign shortcuts and we don't know about the inventory filter and how many options we're gonna be, ap be able to apply and i thought about any one more is that is max level 165 or 170? These are big questions that's gonna determine how fast or how hard is the rebirth season. And people like to ask me what I'm gonna start on the season. So this is basically my plan. Of course, I'm gonna start with the new skills. It's gonna be Black Plague and Hama. I'm gonna try both of these to check which one is stronger and I'm gonna keep playing that. If I get into some progression issues, I'm gonna switch to a bow skills and it's gonna be one of these. Crystal Arrow, Unleash Lightning Shot or Rapid Shot for the fast progression. If these builds are boring, I'm gonna probably switch to Frost Thorn, Frost Bomb with a barrier build. Cause barrier build is really interesting. And if I finish these builds, my second build is gonna be Explosive Slash, Velvet Barrage, Combo, Deadly Poison Claw, any of these. 
So this is my early basically plan. And this is where I stop. This is everything I wanted to say. So thanks for watching. And I'm gonna be playing season tomorrow early. As soon as I can, I'm gonna go get a good nap. I was thinking about not gatching in the season, but I'm probably gonna gacha like maybe 5 or 10k rubies. I'm gonna see how I'm gonna feel in the morning. All of the links I'm gonna leave in the description, so check those. I'm gonna leave the unique skill changes, I'm gonna leave the patch notes, and I'm gonna upload my notepad in Google Docs so you could guys watch it, as maybe I'm gonna update it in the meantime. So GG's, have fun, and if you're interested, I'm gonna stream on Twitch, on YouTube, go see me tomorrow when the season launches. GG's, have fun, and time to budge.